Hello, uh, hall again. Um, all right, so I finished Ghost Towns um, a couple nights ago, um, and since then, the um, the creator of this game, um, Mr. Harrington, has uh, he, he's made some changes. He's added, um, according to the the uh, page on Slime Salad, which uh, looks like this. Um, well, that looks like nothing. Okay, never mind. Um, Oops. He... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, he uh, added some uh, NPCs uh, to the, the game. He fixed some typos and stuff. And apparently he's also added a Jukes box. Now, full disclosure, I, I downloaded the um, one of the first rewrites uh, last night and played through a little bit just to see the new NPCs. Um, I made a couple of new discoveries, which um, was kind of nice to see. Um, but I had not seen the jukebox that's apparently been added since my last playthrough. So, um, I, I don't really want to start a new playthrough just to see jukeboxes and stuff. But, you know, the one thing about this game that I, um, it, normally with an OHR game, you just kind of play it and then you're like, all right, that was cool. And you move on to, you know, something more important with your life. And, um, but, you know, the thing with, uh, with this particular one, um, it, it does kind of get you thinking a little bit because the one of the, my mistakes I realized going into the um, the last version was that um, I didn't know exactly what was going on, which I, I think most people won't know what's going on. But I'm so used to these Walrus games having Bob Sterlaw as a main character that I just kind of assumed more of the same here. So when I realized that he was, had some kind of body switch, I'm thinking, oh, well, that's like uh, that game Walter's Mercenaries that, um, that uh, Wobbler made, I don't know how long ago. Um, the, but it got canceled because literally no one played it, and um, which is a shame because it had a pretty good premise. And, and um, I, you know, one of those ones, again, I, I was hoping to see more, but, you know, you got to make time to make games and it's harder and harder to make time for things. So, um, it looked like one of those games that was going to be another big, uh, sprawling epic like, uh, Walthrist, uh, original. And, um, no one's really got time to make games that long anymore. Um, which I'm certainly <laughs> very familiar with and which is why it's taken me so long to make my own. Um, but, you know, I think that's one of the nice things about having short games is, you know, there's time to actually finish them. But at the same time, it, it reminds you of all those great ideas that um, really don't have room anymore to to see its place. And what I've, you know, come to realize just reading the forums and, and playing this game is that's exactly what this game is. It's sort of that uh, he calls it a graveyard of ideas. And, and um, I'm wondering if even just the whole body switch thing is part of that concept of, this is an idea I had a long time ago. Uh, I really wanted to see it happen, and it just didn't go anywhere um, due to, you know, various factors. And, I mean, it's kind of, it's hard to accept sometimes that, you know, our ideas don't um, don't pan out the way we hope. And, I mean, we all have that problem. But, um, anyway, I'm back here for a bonus part. It's not really officially canon, I guess, because, you know, I, in part seven I finished the game three times. Um, but I didn't want to go back and kind of review just some of the, the changes, some of the things that I discovered on my you know, on, on time uh, last night. And, um, and I, I wanted to kind of say a few things I've, I think I've discovered about it, um, because I don't really want to end on part seven looking like a complete idiot. Um, I guess I have an ego that doesn't want to be idiotic, but, um, <coughs> give me. Sorry, I realize I cough a lot. Um, does that if I talk too long? Um, anyway, so let me. Um, I'm gonna go through a little bit of this. I'll keep talking while I play. Um, I think there was something. Oh, but before I do that, I wanna say one thing. I, the, I was laughing a lot at those skeletons in part four, and um, I just got a. I was just checking my email a little while ago, and I, I and the creator of the game actually sent me picture of um a real <laughs> let me just i'm gonna just show you instead of trying to explain it this 
Um, I'm a little bothered by that, but it's a real thing. And um, the fact that somebody paid money to make this um, makes me worry about the world, society, and I'm a little scared about who, uh, which secret operations this movie is funded because um, no one in the right mind would ever watch that, not even kids. That's just dumb. Okay. All right. Enough, uh, enough waiting. Let me go ahead and play. I was going to make this really short, but I think I've already allotted my... Uh, or used up the time I was getting a lot to play on just rambling. So here we go. All right. So um, I have my. I just transferred my um, save file to the new folder. So um, all I'm really gonna do again is just kind of walk around and look at the new people. Um, all right. I don't think anything changed in the house unless the jukebox is in there. I don't know if the sound is big enough. I figure if I was gonna play the jukebox, you're gonna want to hear it. Um, so a few of the things that I, I was thinking about, I, obviously the whole body thing was reminiscent of, um, mercenaries. A lot of these characters I still don't actually know, but, um, here's one of the ones that he added in, uh, recently. This is Robot Butler. Uh, for those who don't know, this is from the Village People game. Um, I served a kind but strict master before coming here when his world ended, I wandered. I was welcome here. You see, that's a little bothersome because I think his world is our world, and you know, I think that's where um, I think this is the first character that really kind of makes it the idea hit home that maybe this is some kind of limbo world. Um, which brings me to another. Oh, I don't know what I was going to read. Um, which brings me to another question. Okay, you know, the whole time I'm wandering around, wondering what the heck are these crystals are for, and you know, when we think about what. Um, uh, the original game, Walthros, the whole premise is to gather five crystals, and it occurred to me that there's five different crystals uh, here. Get out of the way, guys. Oh, he added, that's right, he just said he added another one of these things. Dang. Um, actually looked like I saw a third up there. I never checked this white crystal here. Um, I don't exactly remember the order of things, but I do remember the original game was about liberating five crystals, and... Now, apparently, this place is a manufacturer of crystals, and I think he always said there was a place that was sort of like the, the, um, like industry zone of all the universe, uh, according to Walther's terms. And um, I'm guessing that this is it, which does bring, uh, it helps me to kind of tie this into the um, the ending of Armageddon. He also says the tower is um, sort of the unimplemented idea uh, that he had for Armageddon. Um, and I think if this whole town were part of that, it would make a lot more sense. Wow, he added three of these things. Oh, man. All right, so we have another, um, fish, dude. Hello, hello. How is town treat you? Good, good town. Um, I don't know who he's, what game he's from or why he exists, but... There he is. Okay. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I think this might be too many <laughs> machines. <laughs> oh, gosh. Do they all say the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> the nearest. This guy. <laughs> I love the stupid sound effects. <laughs> so sorry. <clears throat> now, he also added in... Uh, I'm not going to go through it now, but... The stair in away on the right uh, it takes you to halfway up the tower. That was something that was new that was added since my original playthrough. Um, anyway, I got an octopus here, Selby. Have you seen Don at that Do Donate Mellow? I'll just call him by his pronunciation name. Have you seen Donate Mellow? I think I've got a crush. Don't tell my husband. But now, if you go back to talk to the turtle, who you assume will, you know, you would think that you would just kind of spoil the beans. Nah, he's still looking for worms. So he's basically a man. He he cares about one thing and he's going for it. Doesn't care about, you know, other things. And that's cool. You know, I'm that way many times. You get me set on one thing and I'm my brain's just there for good until it's done. So, makes sense. Anyway, one of the things that, um, you know, you probably saw that I kept going back in this room over and over last time. Well, it turns out after you beat, uh, or after you get through the tower, 
and the bunny lady leaves. Look who's here, Dr. Phil. Dumpna asked me to take care of this before she left. None of your business, Lick. Move along. Um, you'll notice that our friend the horse is gone. Finally. So, there was a change. And I'm happy to see that, because, again, I like to see things change over time. And, you know, when it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel like anything's moving. So, I was glad to see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think, um, oh, and the other thing he added in the burger places, um, apparently a lot of people had trouble with the burger puzzle, um, which I guess explains the new addition here. Um, he added a new sign over in the corner. You remember the original sign said, um, burgers are live money, or burgers are money? Um, in this one, he says, order rest upon his head. Kind of giving away the secret, but that's okay. Apparently, uh, I know, well, this was a pretty tricky puzzle. i not going to lie. It wasn't, it's probably the hardest one in the game. So a little extra help might have been necessary. Um, apparently, um, he says that I was the fastest to solve it. So, I mean, you can see in the playthrough, it didn't take that long. Um, I don't think anything... Oh, no, there was one change in the club. I remember now. If you go... Uh, oh, there's the jukebox. Never mind, there's two changes. Um, one of the changes here is the uh, jack-o'-lantern here. The word gluttony is called inside the pumpkin's mouth. It grins wider. See, it's kind of freaky, I think. Um, and then Hank, you know, he's still saying the same old, same old. Um... All right, so here's the jukebox. I haven't actually used this yet, so I didn't realize this is where it was. So let's go ahead and try it now. Um, I'm guessing the jukebox is pretty much like uh, any jukebox would be and just plays any track from the game. So let's go to Monochrome. That was a pretty cool track. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Nice little addition. Go up on stage, dance to the... Oh, I can't go on stage. Dang. All right, never mind. Go hang out with Pinguino. Pinguingo. Um, oh, that reminds me. Um, I'm a little surprised that, you know, with all the cameos that are in this game, I'm a little surprised that Mr. Scotty's not in here. Um, and for those of you who are watching this who have never played any Walters games, um, you have no idea who Scotty is. He is a particularly annoying character from, I think, the first game. And I think he made a cameo and a couple others, but he, uh, if I recall, I think he's a prince of a, of a continent, um, but he's really whiny, like really whiny. And um, I think one of the big jokes of the series is, you know, how to get rid of Scotty. And so I was a little surprised that he's not in Ghost Towns. Um, I think he should be. So uh, just kind of a shout out there. Um, Ghost Drums. Yeah, good one. This is the tower song, I think. So, um, I don't know if you guys can hear it. I think it should be loud enough, right? Let me crank it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Sorry, I don't apologize for that. <laughs> um, I you know I like these try. This is um the soundtrack is from Glock and Mr. 8-Bit. Mr. 8-Bit actually did the soundtrack for my game Entrepreneur. Uh, I think he's just a great composer and great uh, music man. Uh, I wish he would do more for my game, but I know he's um he's moved on to bigger and better things. So uh, that's cool. Um, but, um, the side, uh, just as usual, the soundtrack is, uh, I like it a lot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to hang out here for the next hour listening to the jukebox, but I'm glad I have that option. Um, although it seems like a lot of these are similar, I'm just noticing. Um, 
Oh, I, there's something else I was going to say about this, but anyway, uh, music is just, it's all well done, and pretty much everyone he does is just fun. Oh, I know what I was going to say, it's like kind of menacing, but um, I think that adds to the charm of, well, charm, that's a weird word to use for menacing. Never mind, I'm rambling again. I think this is still too loud. All right. Um, I think that was the most of the changes in the game. Um, oh no, there's a monkey here. Bojo. This wasn't the inheritance I wanted. I think he was from the original game. I don't really recall. But now you'll. Um, one thing I noticed in my playthrough last night is um, Mr. Um, oh my gosh, how many of these are there? Um, are they just spawning? The longer I play, do they just do more multiply? That'd actually be a pretty cool feature. To start with one in the beginning, and then every 15 minutes here in the game, a new one spawns. That would be a suggestion. Um, that I think would give the player incentive to speed up his playthrough. Um, anyway, the Dr. Filth who was out here, um, I noticed that he was in two places at once, so I'm glad to see that that was fixed. Um, again, as you recall, I was going through, um, every time I went through the, the barn, the horse is still there, um, and the Dr. Philip was up here, and then last night I noticed that after um, Dempna was gone, he was in the um, in the barn, but then he was also by the doctor's office, so it was a little weird. Um, just on account of seeing changes, I'm a little curious. I don't think anything's going to change here, but... Um, I didn't test this last night. I, I probably don't need to test it even now. Um, but I am curious, just because the horse guy changed, if maybe going red will... Um, and it would be cool if new patients were to show up here every so often, just, again, for info's sake. Um, I just, yeah, I'm curious to see if maybe Red Guy is going to respond to me now. I love Red, bring me Red, show me Red now. He's not. Okay, I was hoping maybe, maybe somehow my playthrough would influence the change there. Um, I think that's everything that's new um, since my playthrough last night. Um... Yeah, I think one thing would be nice if um, I know the on the web page it keeps saying final, final version and unless anything crops up. I, you know, one thing I still think would be really nice is if the response to the people change after the trials are over. And, and yes, by the way, the page calls this the 10 trials. So even when I helped um, the turtle out, uh, that's considered a trial. Um, and that was another thing I wanted to address. I knew there was something I was forgetting. Um, I kept referring to... Um, the idea that this poor turtle gets shot if I don't help, um, that was actually a mistake on my part. I went back and watched the, the videos and I realized all he had was a shooting pain and my options were to either uh, help or to leave alone, not to shoot. Um, I don't know why I kept going around thinking I had an option to shoot the turtle. Um, I'm not saying it should be an option, but it does bring up another question. Um, what happens if we were given more drastic alternate choices? Um, because this is a game about, um, it seems kind of philosoph yeah, philosophical in its approach, uh, which I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of philosophies, um, only because, um, there are so many philosophies that it's just, it gets confusing to, you know, like, assuming one is correct, and uh, I'm not even going to get into that. Um, but, you know, it, I do like... A kind of an offshoot of philosophy where you know it's just ideas um, of what could be um, you know the the um, uh, what am I trying to say I don't even know I'm blanking here um, but I, I, I like the idea of um, like there's a game um, called DSX where you can again it's a three ending kind of game where your choices you know um, change the ending and also they kind of change the gameplay 
And I'm just wondering what this game would be like if we did actually have the um, the trial of choice, uh, where like you know, I, if I ignored the turtle, um, that would be it. Then his response to me would forever be, "Why didn't you help me?" Um, if I um, I actually forgot what my other alternate choices were, but um, you know, I mean, it would be cool, cool to see that, but also to just I, I like to see the effects of things. Like with the um, the mouse here, lets me in because I help the robot, uh, the grape guy. All right, I'm gonna take the stairs while I'm talking. Um, and you'll notice dump is gone. Um, so, I, you know, again, I, I, I'm just kind of repeating myself here, but I think that seeing actual change is refreshing in games. And that's the one thing I don't get a lot of out of Ghost Towns, but maybe it's not supposed to be that way. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, which brings me to, now that I'm walking up the tower here again, brings me to my, um, last point I wanted to make before I finalize the playthroughs here, um, or finalize until <laughs> more changes are made. Um, the, um, character, the main guy, um, it's not Bob Sirlaw, and I've realized that now, I've I had time to go back and review the, the videos, and it really is just a story about a guy who has, you know, three different outcomes, and, um, I'm not going to make any speculation what the story is. I think the point of the game is to kind of draw your own conclusions. And I think because there's three different endings, there's not really a conclusion to be drawn. Um, which, again, I think is um, like when you read a novel that has an ambiguous ending or even see movies like Inception where, you know, the ending, you got the top spins, but you're not sure if it's going to fall or stay. You see it wobbling a little at the very end, but it doesn't mean it's going to fall. I think this game has that kind of that same mentality where there's no true ending and that's which ironic because this is the tower of truth you would think by going through this door this is the real ending but how can you be sure because why is the ending you know when you go through your own house why is that any less truthful you know for um for you know any less, less real i guess would be one way of looking at it. And then when you exit the town that's the escape escape from is it a town of lies is it because you know, that's something that they talk a lot about too with um, the horse. And um, I think the more I think about it, the cleverer I think this game is because it, it never gives you answers. It, it gives you speculation. And maybe that's why things don't change even after you get your tokens. Maybe they're not supposed to change. Um, which is why maybe the suggestion, as much as I like the suggestion, maybe nothing will come of it because maybe it's not supposed to. Um, you know, in some games, I think, plenty of games rather, I think are shallow enough to where you have to have the answers. Um, I think that too, a lot of times people want their handheld, they want to be told exactly what to do, which is I think a big frustration I have when I make games um, for myself. I don't want my handheld for everything. I, there's a few things I think I need explanation for, but like when I take my own uh, entrepreneur, I got kind of frustrated when I got the response back that even with a tutorial, there wasn't, no one knew what to do. And I'm thinking, well, common sense could probably take over at this point, but maybe maybe there's more to it. Maybe people are coming at these things with different understandings, and maybe I shouldn't assume that just because I get something doesn't mean everyone else will or that everyone else should. Um, maybe, you know, things really are based on perception and background understanding, and, you know, with, in the case of entrepreneur, some people don't want to make coffee, so maybe they do need to be explained that um, before they... Um, go out and find ingredients and whatnot. And I think with ghost towns, I'm tempted to say we should have some kind of um, bestiary of characters because um, I want to know more about Constituria and I want to know more about the little octopus dude walking around. Um, I want to know more about these characters who've just somehow ended up in this town. And, you know, I mean, I've got their names, but that's all I've got. I don't have their histories. Um, and for someone, you know, with a faulty memory, uh, I'm not going to remember half of the things um, that I, I once played. Um, you know, a few things, like the, the games I'm fonder of, like, you know, the Village People RPG, I'm going to remember them a little more, like the robot. Um, 
because you know I just I remember enjoying the experience of playing them and wanting to see the rest of it and you know the disappointment I had when I found out there wasn't going to be a rest of it uh, Sterla Armageddon um, I you know I remember characters I probably shouldn't remember because I just had so much fun playing through it and I remember it, it was a direct sequel to Walthros and the idea that Walthros could get even darker was just kind of a cool idea and then I think that came out after the joke game of um, the I don't even know how to pronounce it the garbled Walthros Rise of the Crystals I think it was um, and um but, I mean, there's plenty of others, like, um, I remember Grimace was in something, I don't remember, I think it was Gato Secudio, or, I don't, I, I don't remember. And those are things I, I want to, you know, some kind of reflection on, is, you know, maybe there's some kind of, um, of, um, registry in the, you know, like a, um, like a, not a town hall, but some kind of bureaucratic office in ghost towns where everybody's registered, and, this is where they came from. Um, but I don't, again, I, that might defeat the purpose of what this is trying to accomplish. So it's hard to make suggestions in a game that's open to you know, any kind of perspective. And um, That's ultimately what I wanted to say in my um, kind of post playthrough playthrough. Um, is that I get it more, but I, I think there's a point where I'm not going to always get it completely. And I don't think it's a kind of game where it's designed to be gotten completely. Um, because I think it's based on your perception, your memory even. Um, maybe part of the fun of not having a bestiary is, you know, or the bestiary, I mean, they're not enemies, but, you know, the character, the a town registry, I guess we'll call it. Um, I think even the appeal of not having one of those is that, you know, I don't know who they are and I, they're mysterious to me and maybe they should stay that way. Um, so, I mean, there's positives and negatives to every approach, and I, I think, on the one hand, um, Wobbler could go and update this game forever and ever, and there could always be something new to put in here, and, and on the other hand, maybe it's time to stop and move on to a new project, and you see what other creative things come out of uh, his brain, so, I don't know, I don't know how to finalize this other than the, I think it's time to walk through the door of truth which I think is kind of uh, it's more subjective in this game <laughs> I think truth is truth but I think in ghost towns truth is arbitrary so I don't know it's just interesting so here we are with the story of our unnamed character again or no he's not unnamed he's got a name it's Matt I think um this one here is the one that often confuses me because when you're uh, the difference between your sprites is a shirt and a mustache. Um, it's really cryptic when it's in black and white. Um, and even the girl, I think I kept thinking there were two different girls at one point because I saw one of the endings had two different girls. Definitely better in color, but I think it, if it's in color, it's too clear. So I like that these things were. Um, not clear um but we've already seen this so i'm gonna end it as a red dude um so just so i can call it complete um so one of the um descending here kind of makes it seem like that um he jumps himself. I think there's one ending where it's, it's um, implied that she pushes him. Then I think there's an ending where it's implied that the the other guy, the buddy, uh, attacks. So those are the three things, the three possible endings. Um, but this one looks like it, you're the villain. Um, which again, I think would have been interesting if we did have the the consequential you know choice, like you were the t turtle, but chose not to help him. Yeah, you know, if that was to you know acquire some bad guy points, it might be interesting to see how that stacks up um, against this ending here. Um, you know, and that's one other thing too. Um, not that it's needed, but I like games that have you know scores at the end, and I'm wondering if it'd be kind of cool to have like a morality scale on this game, or a um, a truth scale even, or I don't know, some kind of rating system that kind of 
checks uh, maybe the time it takes to solve the trials, maybe, um, you know, how often you have to go back and do things to get the right answer. I mean, I don't know. It's just ideas. Um, I think points are always fun to to have um, to kind of show the progression of your character in more uh, um, registered terms. But again, I don't know if it's necessary. I, I, it might defeat the purpose of the game. Um, it's just while I'm thinking abstractly, it's one thing, but um, yeah, maybe it's a stupid try. I think this is the one where he jumps himself. But again, they don't tell you that he jumps. You just see the last picture. So you can, you know, you have to kind of fill in the story gaps yourself, which, you know, I mean, any good, you know, abstract you know, story will do that. Uh, not that I don't like being told the answer to things. Cause, I mean, I, I buy books to find out how they end. Um, I got a crap load of books around here that I have to keep reading. Um, yeah, but um, I don't know. Just uh, on that note, um, speaking of books, I, I, I want to plug it. I have this series I've been reading for the last couple of years called uh, The Chet and Bernie Mysteries. It's the they're mysteries of uh, Hardboiled Detective and his dog, and the dog's the one who's actually the narrator. Uh, so there's a lot of... Um, um, stories that get started but don't get finished. <laughs> it's just, it's funny. Um, and I think in some way this can, they kind of tie in because um, this is another one where I just feel like the stories aren't really complete. They just, they give you what you need to know and you end on, uh, you end on what you need to know. So, I don't know, just a fun little aside. But anyway, um, I just want to see, the main reason why I'm ending on some of your scenes, I want to see if he's fixed this, uh, typo in the credits yes he has okay so that's been kind of bugging me um so that's it um the end uh, i don't think i have anything else to say um i think what anything else i could say should just be left up to speculation for the player so um once again this went on longer than i expected um i was expecting a five six minute playthrough and i think i have an 20 25 minutes in this now um but yeah i just i enjoy it it's cool and um thanks again for making it i uh, please don't let this be the last one i hope there's more coming or um maybe this will inspire you to go back and finish some of your old games i don't know just a thought but anyway all right bye